today I'm very excited to share that we're finally going on to chapter 2. So the circuits are going to get a lot more interesting and we'll be moving away from the RC filters that we've looked at in chapter 1 or what we've mainly looked at in chapter 1. In this chapter, obviously we're going through a lot of transistors and the first circuit starts off with the BJT LED driver circuit. So what we will be doing in this exercise is using a BJT NPN transistor to drive an LED. We're going to assume that we have some voltage coming in from a microcontroller. So before we start, let me just show you the question itself. So exercise 2.1, what is the LED current approximately in the circuit of figure 2.9? So this is the circuit that's included in figure 2.9. We have an LED, we have a resistor, we have a transistor, which is an NPN, 2N2904, but I don't think that's going to be important for the question itself. And then we have a resistor that's connected to the base. So the question is, what is the minimum beta required for Q1? And the first part of the question is, what is the current through this LED? So first of all, let me just tell you a little bit about this circuit. We have a 3.3 volt driving signal, which we can assume is coming from a microcontroller. We have a resistor on the base of this NPN transistor. The base is this pin over here. So the value of the resistor is 10 kilo ohms, as you can see. We have another resistor that's connected to the collector of the transistor. So the collector pin is this pin, one without the arrow. And that value is 330 ohms. Connected to the power supply, which is a 3.3 volt power supply, is an LED. And that LED obviously goes to the resistor. The emitter of the transistor is connected straight to ground. And obviously that is shown with this arrow over here. So firstly, what we need to do is calculate the LED current in this circuit. So in order to calculate the LED current, we need to know Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law. So I've given the Ohm's law triangle on the screen now. We'll start with a green LED. In the book, there are some graphs which show you the various different voltage drops for LEDs, and they do change with color and current, but the change with current is not significant or can be assumed to be zero for this example. So for a green LED, the forward voltage denoted as VF is equal to two volts. And then using Ohm's law, we have obviously a 330 ohm re resistor. We're going to assume the transistor is fully closed, so zero ohms there. Then we can calculate the voltage drop on the 330 ohm resistor, which is going to be the power supply, 3.3 volts, minus the forward voltage of the LED. So that gives us a 1.3 volts value on the 330 ohms resistor. Next, we can calculate the current through that resistor. So obviously we have voltage and we have the resistor. As it is a 330 ohm resistor, so 1.3 volts divided by 330 gives us a current of 3.94 milliamps. So let's call that 4 milliamps as we only need to calculate this approximately. Next, just looking at Kirchhoff's current law, which tells us that current in a loop is the same. So that means the current through the resistor is the same as the current through the LED. So our LED current is equal to the current through the 330 ohms resistor, which obviously we calculated as being equal to 3.94 milliamps. So obviously we've got our 330 ohm resistor. We've got 4 milliamps going down this resistor. That means that there's also 4 milliamps going down the LED. So that is the solution for the first part of the question. For the second part, we need to calculate the minimum beta, which is the current gain of a transistor. Sometimes it's denoted as HFE. So bringing back the circuit again, HFE is equal to the collector current, which is going down this node over here divide by the base current, which is going down here. Our emitter current is going to be a total of the collector current plus the base current, but that's not required for this question. Previously, we calculated the collector current is equal to four milliamps roughly, and we can calculate the base current using this equation over here. So we've got a driving voltage of 3.3 volts here. And what we're going to do is assume that we've got a diode voltage drop over here due to a PN junction. So as this is an NPN transistor, we have a PN junction here, which is going to produce 0.6 volts drop. So obviously this is ground. That means this node over here or the base of the transistor is going to be at 0.6 volts. 
So the voltage drop across the 10K resistor is going to be 3.3 volts minus 0.6 volts. And the current through that resistor is going to be the voltage drop of the resistor. So 3.3 minus 0.6 divided by 10 kilo ohms. So that gives us a base current of 0.27 milliamps. Now to calculate the minimum beta required, we simply plug these numbers in. So 0.27 and 4 milliamps into this equation over here which gives us a minimum beta of 14.8. So we can use any transistor which has um, a current gain value or HFE or beta above 14.8, which is most transistors really. So now that we've fully covered what's required for the question, what I want to do is go a step further and show how we would be able to calculate component values for this for a specific example. Basically, the design process for coming up with the value for the resistance here, the value for the resistance here, and choosing our transistor and LED. So let's now go through the design process. So first of all, the main thing we want to do is choose our LED. That means the color, the brightness, how bright we want it to operate, things like that. So once we have chosen our LED, obviously, then we can work out what current we want the LED to run at. Obviously, you can just do this by looking at the data sheet and decide, okay, I want this to run at 2 milliamps or 5 milliamps. Another thing you can do is buy some LEDs and test them out to see what brightness you are happy with. And then you can fine tune the LED current and the voltage that way. Choose our LED. Let's say we want a current through the LED to be 2 milliamps for this example. And our chosen LED has a forward voltage drop of 2.7 volts. And both of this information, so this one we've obviously selected, we want an LED that can obviously handle 2 milliamps. And this data is available on the data sheet for the component that's been selected. The next thing we can do is choose the collector resistance, which is this resistor over here. And it's called the collector resistor because it is connected to the collector pin of the transistor, which is down here. So we have a current of 2 milliamps. We have a power supply of 5 volts in this case and our LED voltage is 2.7 volts so this LED drops 2.7 volts across here the first thing we're going to assume is that the switch is fully closed so that means this node is at zero same as this node here so if you have 2.7 volts here the remainder of the 5 volts will be across this resistor here so that will be 5 minus 2.7, which is equal to 2.3 volts. So the resistor here is going to have 2.3 volts. Now by using Ohm's law, we can calculate the value for the resistor R1, which is going to be equal to 2.3 divided by the current through the LED, which obviously we want 2 milliamps. And that same current is flowing in this direction over here. So it's the same current that's going through the resistor. So 2.3 volts divided by 2 milliamps gives us a resistance value of 1150 ohms. So we can set the value for this resistor to 1.150 ohms. This resistor might not be available in real life, so you want to find the closest value that's available. Obviously, if you've got some current limitations that you need to meet, then you want to go the next value up. So that will bring our 2 milliamps down. When selecting the resistor, you want to make sure that the resistor can handle the power that's going to go through it. So in this case, obviously, we've got 2 milliamps going through that resistor and it's going to be a 1150 ohm value. So P equals VI, so the power dissipation is equal to voltage times the current. So 2.3 volts and 2 milliamps gives us a power dissipation of approximately 5 millivolts. Most resistors are rated above that. You'll typically get 50 millivolts, so that, that should be okay. Obviously, if you're running the LED at higher currents, then that's something you need to be careful with. I don't think you would be using this configuration for running L LEDs for higher currents anyway. So next thing we need to do is select our transistor, which in this case is going to be relatively easy because there's two things that we need our transistor to do. So the transistor needs to be able to handle a current of more than 2 milliamps plus some margin. So we've got obviously 2 milliamps going through. And then we can add some margin. Most transistors will handle 2 milliamps, no problem. So I don't think that's a big issue. 
we need to select a transistor that has large enough beta so that we are not drawing too much current from whatever the source is going to be so let's say it's a microcontroller let's say that can provide up to one milliamp of current then that gives us a limitation for the minimum beta that's required but in this case obviously we're only driving two milliamps through here so that's not going to be much of an issue what we're going to do is find a transistor that's more than 25 beta the minimum values are typically given in the data sheet so that's what you want to look for the the minimum value rather than the typical so in this case what i'm going to do is just choose a jelly bean transistor for example 2n3904 which is kind of given to us in the art of electronics book as well and that has a beta of 200 so the next thing we can do is choose the base resistor so obviously we want a current of 2 milliamps over here i've gone for a beta of 50 on this and that's because 2N3904 has a minimum beta of approximately 40 to 50 and it really does depend on the current. A collector current of 0.1 milliamps, the beta is roughly 40. So I've gone for 50 in this case. But as you increase the current, the beta does increase to a maximum of 300. But remember, we are interested in the minimum. So in this case, 50 should be sufficient. Next, we need to calculate the current that's going to be required. To be driven from our input over here so the drive current is basically this current in this path over here and it's also equal to the base current so the drive current we need is the led current divided by the beta which is 50 in this case so that's 2 milliamps divided by 50 which gives us a value of 40 microamps so we want to provide at least 40 microamps from this input over here so again, using Ohm's law, we're going to calculate the voltage drop on R2. So we know this side and we can work out this side and that gives us the voltage on here. We also know the current. So using Ohm's law, we can calculate the resistance value or the absolute maximum resistance value that we can have on this resistor over here. So we've got 3.3 volts over here and then we have a PN junction over here, which gives us a voltage drop of 0.6. So this is reference to ground. That means this node is going to be ground plus 0 0.6. So we've got 3.3 here, 0 0.6 here. So the voltage drop on the resistor is going to be 3.3 minus 0 0.6. And in order to calculate the resistance, we can do Ohm's law. So basically voltage divided by the current gives us the resistance. So that's 2.7 volts from this calculation here divided by 40 microamps from this calculation over here gives us a maximum R2 value of 67k5. What I would do is use a value that's smaller than this and that will give us sufficient current to drive 2 milliamps through here. Basically, we want the transistor to fully saturate and fully turn on. So that gives us the values for all the components in this circuit diagram. And this is the final circuit. So we've got, so I've put down a 50 kilo ohm resistor here, a 1150 resistor over here. Obviously you might need to find what's available in real life. You know, if you're using E24 series or E96 series, that's up to you. But find the closest values. And obviously we selected our LED and everything. So one thing of note is the transistor beta. And the beta of the transistor can't be relied on for circuits like this because there are a large number of factors that affect the transistor beta. So the first one is temperature. So if you increase your temperature or your operating temperature range, the beta will go higher as well. Now this can be because of the environment or it might be because of the amount of power that you're running through that transistor. Both will cause a temperature rise. Another thing is the current. So obviously you're pushing some current through that transistor and the beta is non-linear with the collector current. So if you want to see this, you can have a look at the data sheet for 2N3904. And you've got the DC current gain over here. So you can see at 0.1 milliamps, the beta is 40. And at 10 milliamps, the beta is 100, up to a maximum of 300. That is a large variation on that beta value. So you can't rely on this for any controlled calculations. It is useful for doing minimum calculations or maximum. Another source of variation is the manufacturing process. As you can see from that data sheet at 10 milliamps, you've got a variation from 100 to 300. And that's just component to component variation. The last thing I want to do for this question is show you a simulation model. 
So what I've done is for the design process circuit that we calculated using the 5 volt power supply and the 2.7 volt LED is show you the signals and how it works. So first of all, let's look at this node over here. So I'm going to put a label on it. Let's call that V in. So you can see V in goes from 0 to 3.3 volts back to 0 and 3.3 volts. So it's just a signal coming in from a microprocessor or some input. The next node I wanted to look at is the base voltage, which is basically this node over here. And you can see when the 3v3 is on, this caps out at 0.7 volts roughly. Obviously in our calculations, we used a value of 600 millivolts. But in this case, the value is actually 790 millivolts. So that will create some differences in the currents that are flowing through this circuit. But 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is the rough calculation. Maybe a 0.7 calculation would have been a little bit closer. So that's the base voltage over here. Our emitter voltage obviously is connected to ground, so that's always going to be zero. The next thing I want to look at is the voltage on this diode. Obviously, we calculated a value of 2.7 volts, and that does vary with the diode and the amount of current that you are passing through it. So an LED like this, you've got 2.77 volts with approximately 1.8 milliamps flowing through it. In our circuit, we were calculating a current of 2 milliamps. So you can see it is a little bit less than that, but that is probably because the LED voltage, forward voltage is a little bit higher than what we had used in the calculation. So obviously, in order to compensate that, what we can do is reduce the value of this value resistor over here. So if we put that down to 1.1 kilo ohms, you can see the current has gone up. So the LED is going to be a little bit brighter. So the current now through that LED is 1.918 milliamps. The voltage drop will also go up, but not as much. So you can see it's gone from 2.77 to 2.78 volts. So as the current increases, the voltage does increase a little bit across the LED. And there is an upper limit, obviously, that you can pass through in terms of the current for that LED. So you can see when we have a 3.3 volt signal, we have an LED that's conducting at roughly the same time. So when the input signal goes off, obviously the LED goes off, the current through that LED also goes off. And our calculations match what we had shown on the presentation that I did before this simulation. Obviously there is some fine tuning to do and that is expected as there is a lot of variation on these parts. Further on in the exercises, and I think maybe not in this chapter, but other chapters, we'll see circuits where, where they are intended to be LED drivers. So what you want to do is control the current rather than the voltage drop. So you get similar brightnesses and you've got more control over the LED itself. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. As I said at the start of the video, we're finally on to chapter two. So the circuits are going to get a little bit more exciting and I'm going to build some up as well. So subscribe to my channel. And if you have any suggestions for me, please let me know in the comment section below. Bye for now.